And welcome back to AWS On Air, live at the DC Summit for, uh, for day two. My name's Chad Lacey, I'm a global sales strategist with AWS. I'm joined with my co-host, Steve. Hey, I'm Steve Roberts, developer advocate for .NET and PowerShell, and we are joined for this session by Erin. And we're going to be talking about open data sets. So Erin, would you like to introduce yourself yeah. and tell our viewers a little bit about what you do at AWS? I would love to, so thanks for having me, Chad and Steve. My name is Erin, I'm the life sciences lead on the AWS open data team. So we are a team of subject matter experts under the global social impact organization. Um, and what we do is we democratize access to data. Cool. We believe that if you centralize high quality, high impact data in the cloud, it'll make it easier for people to access the data. And that really means democratization. It's not just people who have the resources to store and access big data. It suddenly becomes available to everybody, helps anybody get to their science faster, and therefore speed that innovation process. That's great. Cool. Yeah. So, that was going to lead to my first question. I'm not sure if you have more to add on that, but I was going to ask you, what is open data? Why is it beneficial? How do people use it? Yeah, if you so if you want to stick with the definition of open data, if you search, you know, open data on the internet, I know we have a, we're, we're ready to do some Google searching in a little bit. I'm not going to make you do that right now. <laughs> but the idea of open data is that it's, a, it's open data, data available for anybody for any use. Um, and so typically these are data that are distributable, derivable, and um, available for people to build on. So um, a great example of this would be something like um, YouTube, where you can just go online, you can look at videos, right? In theory, if they're permissibly licensed, you could potentially you know, work with the data, utilize it in derived uh, works. And the idea is, right, these data are openly available. Anybody can get to the data. And if you make that barrier to entry easier yeah. um, by either surfacing the data in a, a, a public repository or make the data um, more functionally useful by working with a data provider to optimize the data, you're going to help those thousands or millions of users much faster. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All right, so how would people get started or how can they share their data on AWS? Yeah, thanks for asking. So the first thing I'm going to do is, and you know, we're, we're going to see what happens here because I'm not driving this demo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, that's going to be the hoot. Yeah, <laughs> sure. no, no, no. I, tr I trust that you can use, utilize the Google. So um, uh, I wouldn't trust anything. <laughs> so, um, so what I'd recommend is, what the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to Open Data on AWS. So if we just okay. search Open Data AWS, open, um, in Open Data. <laughs> AWS, okay. The first thing that should pop up is surprise. Oh, they run AWS. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, going, so this is going well so far. Yeah, that's step I one. think we can do this. Right? Step <laughs> that's one. step one there. So, um, so this is, this is our team's public website, um, and the best thing about this is, you know, this is you know, this is kind of us in a, a little nutshell. But what I want to direct um, our viewers to is uh, this. A nondescript gray link down below says find publicly available yeah, yeah, yeah. data on AWS. Okay. Oh, hang on, I've lost my mouse. There we go. Yeah, so we're going to have a click on that. That's going to direct us. It might direct us. There yes, you go. <laughs> it is going to direct us to the registry of open data on AWS. Now, this is a digital catalog of all of the data that we know are being openly shared on AWS. And actually, last we checked, uh, we helped to distribute over 100 petabytes of open data. Wow. Uh, with petabytes. This. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Um, and, and this is just one place on AWS where you can find data. Like I said, most of these data are publicly accessible. It is free to access for our data users. Um, another place I would recommend uh, data searchers to go to would be the AWS Data Exchange, okay. which is a great way to subscribe to third-party data in the cloud. Yeah. Um, but the cool thing about the registry is, uh, and I was talking to Steve, so Steve, uh, your, your favorite kind of data is not data that I'm uh, well versed in. <laughs> no, um, outside of work, um, I'm a photographer and I do astrophotography when the skies are clear in Seattle, which is like one night a year. So, you know, okay. I'm always looking for data that I can use. Yeah, so uh, the, you probably know this kind of data better than me. So like I said, we're subject matter experts. My own domain is the life sciences. Um, I'm a, a veterinarian, also a trained genomicist. And so uh, my favorite kind of data is genomic data, which can make pretty pictures <laughs> if you try. But but what I'm going to recommend you do is, let, why don't we uh, type in uh, NOMAD, G-N-O. Sorry? G-N-O-M-A-D. M-A-D. One thing about, I think every science is that we like really cute acronyms. Um, right. So NOMAD stands for Genome Aggregation Database. Um, and so this is a, the largest publicly available uh, catalog of human genetic variation in the okay. world. So if you had a click on, so scroll, yeah, have a click on Nomad right there. Just click uh, right on, click right one? on the title. This one? Up, 
There you, there you go. go. There Perfect. we go. Yeah. Read the screen, Steve. Read yeah, the screen. Yeah, no, he's doing, you're doing great. And so, um, so this is, uh, this is a pretty typical example of a data set that's listed on the registry. And the nice thing about this, these are all data set provider owned and maintained. So uh, we just help people distribute their data. We want people to um, feel like, A, they own the data, and B, that they are you know, in power of their data, and their data users can get straight to the data. So okay. this is all user provided, or data owner provided. And not only do you have a description of the data, the license of the data, and the documentation, on the right, you're going to see the resources on AWS. Nice. And the beauty of it is, you can see, we, we literally surface an S3 bucket. And most of the data okay. that we help to distribute is um, stored in S3, Amazon S3. And you can see we even have examples on how you can go ahead and start to access the data. So this is where it's going to get interesting, Steve. I'm going to recommend that you pull up your command line interface and actually paste in that, that command. All right. This is the ultimate in remote control. Yes. <laughs> You're All doing right. great, Steve. I got faith in you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, off uh, we go. Press enter. Press enter. That, uh, that bit I've got. Yes. <laughs> We're just waiting. There you go. Okay. So, yeah, so the nice thing about you know the registry is we want to bring our data users as close to the data as possible. We don't want to tell you how to use the data. If there are amazing tutorials, usage examples, et cetera, um, we invite the entire community to publish on the registry of open data so that we want to bring in the community as well. Right. Okay. The yeah. beauty of a lot of open data users is they're using the data in ways we never knew they could use the data or the data provider didn't anticipate them using it in. Yeah, I think that's so. the beauty of part of this open data, right? That's right. Just discovering new uses for it. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it, depending on how you know how you prefer to work with data, this is genomic data. Mm -hmm. You know, you could go searching the the raw data here. This is actually very well organized, um, so you can look at the papers associated with the data. This is a versioned data set, so you can look at different releases, okay. uh, potential tools, and every data set is going to be a little bit different, a little bit different documented. Uh, but we do request that our data providers. Uh, uh, maintain very accurate documentation for their users. Okay. Yeah. So I did have one question from, from the viewers. Uh, Patty Holt from LinkedIn wants to know, how is AWS Open Data Project, or how, wants to know if AWS Open Data Project would have data for Peter Cottontail or rabbits for research? Peter Cottontail or rabbits for research? <laughs> As in, like rabbit genomics? Or, Sounds um, good. Yeah, I, I like it. I, I'm going to interpret that as that. rabbit genomics. And you okay. know, one of the best things about um, having these subject matter experts, uh, including myself, is that we kind of do get an idea of what the community is asking for. Now, I will say I haven't been asked for rabbit genomics data, but <laughs> we definitely do have a data set that could utilize, uh, that could, could be used for, for that particular kind of science. So uh, one of those data sets would be the sequence read archive. So if we backtracked on the okay. registry. Yeah, and so this is a collaboration between us and the National Center for Biotechnology Information and search um, sequence read archive. Three Se words. Sequence. Read. Read. R-E-A-D. R-E, oh, uh, read. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> Sequence read it's archive. Cool. So there we're we gonna go. So this is actually the largest uh, public repository of raw genomic sequencing data. Wow. Uh, so any, um, any project that has been funded by the National, uh, National Institutes of Health has produced genomic sequencing data. Um, typically, we'll submit those data to this open repository. Yeah. So this is a really oh, unique that one data set. One second. Oh, that one did not copy. <laughs> My apologies. Let me swipe that again. Yeah. I am full of demo fail this morning. No, I am. I'm a. I'm appreciative because I forgot my laptop today. <laughs> yeah. So you're you're doing me a solid. Um, so you oh, can wow, say yeah. I would data. actually okay. stop because it'll take you roughly two hours to list this data set. <laughs> there are about 11.3 million unique experiments in this particular okay. data set that yeah. grows every day. Um, but if you are familiar with the rabbit genomics field, which maybe this user awesome. is, yeah. um, what I would suggest is if you know the experiment and you know the accession code that you're looking for, you can actually ac access it just by uh, predicting the file path uh, in Amazon S3. And you can do that just by, if you scroll down a little bit, Steve, um, there is a particular resource that I'd recommend, which is the one right above that. It is SRA pub run ODP. So this is actually um, all of the open access sequence read oh, archives. So rabbit genomics data, metagenomics, viral genomics, we've got a lot of interesting data in there. That's been very well maintained by the, by the National Institutes of Health. 
So, Aaron, it sounds like this open data on AWS is really enabling a lot more science research. Yes, yeah, it's actually incredible. Um, we have one example of a group out of the University of British Columbia called the Serratus Project. And it was just at the very beginning of the pandemic where we realized, wow, we need to be making a lot of data, but also there's a lot of open data that are available in the wild. Why are we not looking at those data to understand how this virus might mutate, what species of these viruses exist, and how can we leverage the cloud to do some really unprecedented science? And so what they actually did was they looked at the sequence read archive. They accessed roughly five or more than five million experiments, wow. and they parallelized their alignment and discovery pipeline using AWS native services and uh, discovered over 100,000 new coronaviruses, all wow. with public data. That's incredible, yeah. that's pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah, I mean the scale at which they were did, they did their science, I when I described it when the paper first came out in Nature, I said, wow, this is unprecedented. Um, the, the, the way they could very quickly, I think they did five million samples in under 11 days. Um, which to be able incredible. to do it at that kind of scale, yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. And the nice thing is it's all open data, so they weren't yeah. having to store the data, they weren't having to make new data. They were just standing on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm going to break in here as, you know, as a, a, a potential astrophotographer <laughs> in the making and say, you know, myself and my, my friends in Seattle, are, you know, we're growing frustrated with the, the cloudy nights. Okay. Um, how would I go about finding like astrophotography data? Well, uh, we I could- I guess I would go back to yeah, search, I right? Yeah, I think we'd go back to search. And again, this is not my area of expertise. I do know that some of my colleagues are, are lurking online uh, waiting to answer <laughs> your questions, so they might be able to chime in here. But maybe the first thing I would search is satellite data or space. Oh, just found Space Telescope oh, Science wow. Institute right that there sounds at the good. top. There you okay, go, well, you knew this better than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. look, Space Telescope, public data. Oh yeah. yes, okay. Yeah. So this group um, is a fantastic collaborator <laughs> where they help to put up telescope data. And again, this is really is not what I am good at, uh, but we do have experts who can help <laughs> you drive through this. Uh, unfortunately, not on air today. Oh, I like the fact that you have usage examples. Yeah, so. yeah. And like I said, um, folks can, uh, and people <coughs> have Excuse ideas me. about these data and apply these data in ways that we never really expected. So the beauty of it is, um, this website is an open GitHub repository. Right. Anybody can make a pull request to add a usage example, a tutorial, and we want to hear about it. Mm. Yeah. All right, so at the risk of asking you a question, I, a dumb question, <laughs> um, <laughs> curious on, on what the format of this data is. Is, is it just CSV, is it multiple different formats? It's so many different formats. Okay. Um, actually, I would recommend, uh, well, it was a chalk talk, so it won't be recorded, but we had a, a great chalk talk on kind of best practices on using data, uh, learning things from open data, and, and the fact is we know that there are data types that are very specific to domains. Uh, as a genomics person myself, we, we deal in data types like FASTQ, BAM, VCF, which when you're outside of the field, there, there's like literally maybe no other field that uses variant call files. Um, however, uh, we do kind of recommend open standards. So okay. there are some ways that the, the industries are, are drifting. So for example, um, in satellite imagery, the cloud-optimized geotip has become kind of an accepted and very optimal data type and format to be sharing data via cloud. Okay. Um, and we are learning from other uh, domains as well. So that variant call file is, when you take away all the header data, just a structured yeah. columnar file. And so um, what's happening is that genomics groups are generating more and more data because their samples are getting bigger and bigger. And then you see people like me, I'm a bench scientist by training, uh, <laughs> trying to open the, the file up in Excel and it's not gonna work, right? <laughs> yeah. Excel, Excel breaks after like 6,000 rows. And so what we're seeing now is people trying to make these massive queries and we say, hey, and this, this is something that we've kind of drifted towards in the past year, you know, there's a solution for this. It's called SQL, <laughs> right? It's, it's called SQL. Uh, it, it, you know, so we're bringing computer science to biology to some degree. Gotcha. Uh, and so uh, for, for a data set like a VCF file with hundreds of thousands of, of uh, rows, <coughs> we're recommending Parquet. Okay. So okay. we're learning together. So, but that's really, that's owned by 
I guess the format is, is determined by the data owner, right? And how they're yeah. presenting it as, as an open data set. Yeah, that's that's right. And I like to talk with my data providers when, when I have folks who want to work with me to share their data. I say, let's consider this an experiment. Yeah. We don't always know how your users are going to use the data. And there are going to be very specialized, specific data sets and data types that really have only ever been presented in one format. But if we can, let's say, hey, why don't we put the data up in two or three different formats? Let's see how people interact with the data. And that's how we end up deciding, oh, this, this is actually a really optimal way to share data. Gotcha. Okay, so I encourage my data providers to come with an open mind. And also, if data users are transforming the data, otherwise optimizing the data for their own use cases, reach out to me. If the data are licensed to be redistributed, I'm happy to help them distribute those data as well. Cool. All right. yeah. So earlier on, we touched a little bit on health. So how are, how are we working with health initiatives? Um, you know, they're amassing this amount of, huge amounts of data. Yeah, well we know that in the healthcare space in particular, uh, the rate at which we're producing data is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. um, not just genomic data, but also imaging data, uh, behavioral, wearable. Every time I turn around, there's a new kind of data that we're trying to understand, ultimately to advance population health and precision medicine. And uh, we work with a uh, various number of groups, uh, like the National Institutes of Health, to help distribute the open access portion of their data. So if we backed up a little bit, I'm, I'm, re I'm rapidly receding from Space Telescope because it's <laughs> somewhere that I, I just can't be useful in. But if we, if we backed up to the registry of open data, um, actually the first data set that appears is the Cancer Genome Atlas. Okay. So this is the gold standard data set that follows thousands of individuals that have their genomes, their cancer genomes, as well as histology images, et cetera. Um, and all of these are available on S3 now. Some of those data are obligately controlled access. Okay. Uh, simply because they involve data about humans. And oh, so you so do. PII? Yeah, so yeah. PHI. Yeah. Um, so you do need additional authorization to get access to these data. But um, this is something we want to continue, is working with groups that are trying to advance population health. Um, and if we can help them distribute their data to a global population of researchers, then we absolutely will. And I was noticing on the screen as you as Steve was clicking through, <laughs> you, you've actually got a, a lot of, I mean, this is a global community. You've got some yes. some data, I think, repositories from UK, Biobank, yeah. England, Genomics, is that right? Uh, Genomics England, Genomics yeah. England. Uh, I, I don't know if Genomics England is listed on the registry. Okay. Uh, we are absolutely interested in working with population health initiatives who want to be distributing their data to that global population and really utilize the global resources that AWS has to offer. The biggest problem is when you have this amazing data set that's growing yeah. and growing and you have these global users and all of a sudden they run into like a resource issue, yeah. right? Or an availability issue. So that's what we want to help um, these population health initiatives kind of overcome at the start. Cool. Well, we've got just about a minute left. I want to make sure we hit all the topics that you want to make sure we hit on. Did we leave anything out, anything you want to make sure? I don't think so. <laughs> did I miss a click? I don't think so. Did you miss no, a click? You did great. <laughs> did Steve I, the honestly, test? he saved my life because I don't have my laptop with me today. Um, you know, the only other thing I'd recommend is, like I said, the registry is a catalog. Um, anybody can propose to list their data on the registry, mm -hmm. but I'd also recommend that if you're interested in working with us to help to cover the cost of storage, transfer, or egress of your data, so if you want to, like, not, you mm -hmm. know, if you're, if you're worried about that, do reach out to us. We also have a program called the Open Data Sponsorship Program that'll actually help to cover those expenses for our data providers. Fantastic, Aaron. I really appreciate you showing us the power of open data on AWS, and more importantly, I appreciate you making Steve work for once. <laughs> I try. <laughs> Thanks so much yeah. for being here. Thanks. We appreciate yeah. you all tuning in. We will be right back live from the DC Summit. It's AWS on air.